Hi everyone, my name is Tyler. Today I want to sit down and share my story on how and why I quit fast fashion. So I have not shopped fast fashion for at least the past three years. I am totally a thrift shopper. I will not go to stores like Forever 21, H&M, and there's a reason for that. So stay tuned, I'll tell my story. I filmed this earlier, but I think I ranted all over the place, so hopefully this one is a little less ranty. But okay, let's get into it. So. I'm gonna give a quick backdrop of my shopping history. So when I was in middle school, I would shop every weekend, every Sunday with my friends. We would be there opening to closing. We would shop at Forever 21, H&M, Charlotte Russe, um, Hollister, those were our stores. Me and my friends loved doing that. We did that for like three years straight. Then going into high school, I discovered online shopping and I was addicted to online shopping. I loved the idea of getting everything I wanted online. So again, I would shop at those same stores but I was signed up for their email list and I would get an email from Forever 21 saying, we have a thousand new arrivals. Like every week, I would go through every single page of those new arrivals and I needed to see them all. I didn't want to miss an item. I wanted to make sure when I bought something online, I got the best of the best of the new items. And I wasted so much time doing that. I was so addicted. Um, yeah, it was a problem. And the worst part is I spent so much time doing that, like hours, like five hours each day looking at online shopping and putting things in my cart, a lot of the times I wouldn't even buy the items. It was just fun seeing what the new items were. Um, sometimes I would buy it though, but I loved Forever 21. That was my store. And the prices were on point, like $5 for a t-shirt, yes. $5 or $2 for some earrings, yes. And a lot of it was cute, it was trendy. I loved it. Um, and then when I got into like junior year of high school, I started working for a woman's clothing boutique in Vegas and they had the cutest items, really good prices, but their items were not great quality. I would buy the item uh, at a discount because I worked there and it was like a year later, the item would just be like in, in rags or shrunk or like it was, it was horrible quality. Um, so I worked there for a long time. I was buying all the trendy pieces. The pieces were really cute, but I, I was addicted. Like my whole paycheck pretty much went to the items at that boutique. Um, and then I got into college. When I got into college, I decided I wanted to quit the boutique because I wanted to focus on my studies, but I still really liked shopping, but I had a problem because I no longer got a discount, so I couldn't really afford that boutique anymore. Even though it was kind of affordable, I was a broke college student, um, but I still wanted to feed that shopping addiction, so I got into thrift shopping. My mom has always loved thrift shopping, so I started going to Savers Thrift Store with her, and they opened a Savers literally down the street from my house during that time. So I would go to Savers all the time and I realized the prices were so good and I was getting the items that I would have got from Forever 21, H&M, Charlotte Russe for like less than half the price I was paying. So I was on board with thrifting. I was like, thrifting is my new thing. I am no longer shopping at Forever 21, H&M, um, Charlotte Russe, Hollis. I'm no longer shopping at those stores because they are asking an arm and a leg for these items when I can get them at the thrift store for less. So technically that is how I quit fast fashion because I discovered I could get fast fashion at the thrift store for a way better price. But although I kind of quit fast fashion when I discovered thrifting, I didn't really quit it completely. I would technically, if I couldn't find something at the thrift store, let's say I needed like a black tea and I couldn't find it at the thrift store, I would say, okay, let me just go get it from Forever 21. So I still had a connection to fast fashion. I would still go and get items that I couldn't find secondhand, but I would try to shop secondhand first because of the price. Um, and it wasn't until I watched the documentary, The True Cost and the documentary River Blue. Those two documentaries completely changed my life when it came to my idea of the fashion industry and my shopping habits. So for those of you who haven't seen it, The True Cost basically talks about the true cost of an item. Forever 21 sells items for $5, right? And you're like, man, that's an amazing deal. But the true cost behind the items is, it's people's livelihoods, it's people's health. It's, it's, it's literally humans' lives are on the line for these really inexpensive items that we get from these fast fashion companies. So in the documentary, they really focus on a factory collapse that happened in Bangladesh, and it killed thousands of factory workers and they were creating items for these fast fashion companies. And a lot of, I never heard of that before. I didn't know that factory workers were working in horrible conditions. I didn't realize that people weren't getting paid fair wages to make these cheap clothing. Like I never thought about 
the production side of fashion. I just thought about, you know, the consumer side. What am I getting? What am I getting? But every item, every garment has a story. And a lot of these companies like Forever 21, H&M are not transparent. Zara, I never shopped Zara. They were kind of pricey <laughs> for my little budget, but they had cute stuff too. But all of those companies, it, they have affordable price points, but it's like, okay, these items are so you know, a lot of them are poorly made. They're they're only meant to last a season or two. They're so trendy. They're only really trendy for a season. And it's like these factory workers you learn in the documentary, these people are not getting paid fair wages. They're risking their lives every day. And they are women who are just trying to better themselves and make a living, but they're working in such horrible conditions. It's It really made me, you know, it opened my eyes on okay, fast fashion has some issues. Like maybe I should not shop at all fast. Like maybe I should quit fast fashion altogether. So after watching The True Cost, that made me feel that way. But then I watched the documentary River Blue, which came out a few years later. And that documentary talks about the environmental issues that fast fashion causes. So in the documentary, my favorite line from it and the most um, shocking line was that there's a river in China that when you see the color of the river, it determines the it color of the year. So the river will literally be hot pink if pink is the color of the year that these fashion companies are using, if it's this trendy color. And they show the river and these are like dye, like these dyes, there's like chemical dyes in these rivers and people have to drink out of these rivers and it's so, it's like terrifying. It's like, oh my goodness, my little shirt that cost me $5 that I'm gonna throw away in two years is doing all of this harm to people, to the environment. It really, really made me like, be like, okay, no, no more. Forever 21, you're great with your prices and being on trend, but no, I cannot support that. I, I just could not. So that, after seeing those two documentaries, it really made me say, okay, I'm going to always shop secondhand first, but now if I can't find the item secondhand, I'm going to get the item from a company that's ethical and that's transparent and that is doing something to better the fashion industry. I don't want to give my money to Forever 21 anymore. I don't want to support the craziness that is fashion. And in the documentary River Blue, they share that there is technology in ways that fashion does not have to be harmful, but these companies are just so focused on keeping price points low um, that they don't, they don't care. So my relationship with fast fashion is kind of strange because I was on the process of quitting it uh, well before I knew any facts. I, I was quitting fast fashion before because I just liked the price points at the thrift store and I realized I could get the same items at the thrift store for way less. But um, later on, I read the book, The Japanese Art of Tidying Up, and that really made me question my shopping habits altogether because even though I was thrifting, I was thrifting for the good price points. I wasn't thinking about shopping for quality items. I wasn't thinking about buying items I loved. I wasn't thinking about shopping for need rather than for want. So after reading The Japanese Art of Tidying Up, um, that really got me on track with my relationship with shopping and understanding my habits. And I know that it's a debate because I buy items from H&M and Forever 21 secondhand, even though those are fast fashion. I know there's a debate on whether that's right or not, um, but when I do buy these items at the thrift store, I make sure they are quality and I'm technically extending their lifespan and preventing them from ending up in landfill. So for that reason, I'm okay with thrifting. and I'm okay with thrifting fast fashion, but as far as supporting fast fashion directly, I I cannot, I don't think I ever will. So if I do have anything fast fashion, in my wardrobe that is not thrifted, it is often a gift from family. Like for example, my boyfriend bought me some Adidas last, or was it last year? Yeah, he bought me some Adidas last year as a gift for Christmas, or I think they were Nike, whatever they were, they were some kind of tennis shoe. Um, but I do, when I get gifts, and my family knows, my friends know, like I prefer to get items that are thrifted, but he was like, you need a really good pair of running shoes, they need to be good quality. And the shoes are amazing quality. So. I understand when people do want to shop fast fashion to get that item that's really high quality, especially if there's not an affordable ethical alternative to those items. But my message on my channel, and I hope to encourage all of you guys, is to try to shop secondhand first because there's so many great items that are already in existence. 
the new items are great and all, right? They're trendy, they're cute, but trends repeat themselves. Sometimes you can find these trendy items at the thrift store. So that is my message to you guys. I just want you to consider shopping secondhand first. For those of you who haven't seen the True Cost and River Blue documentaries, I suggest you watch them. They are really good and really eye-opening to an industry that the fashion industry has the ability of being amazing, but us as consumers, we have to hold them accountable. There's technology out there where they don't have to be destroying the environment. These companies are making so much money that they can afford to pay their workers livable wages, but that might mean that they have to raise their prices a little bit. But I think we as consumers are responsible to call these fast fashion companies out, question them, encourage them to be transparent with us, and I think that's the change for the fashion industry. But with that being said, let me know in the comments below if you've quit fast fashion or if you are thinking about quit quitting fast fashion. If you've already quit it, please tell me why. I'm really curious to know. And I thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.